Today, we're going to talk about the pain brush in Salmon Run. In this series, I break down weapons and how to use them in Salmon Run. The videos are short and they don't cover absolutely everything about a weapon. I just aim to make you feel a little bit more knowledgeable when playing Salmon Run. Number one, the pain brush is a middleweight brush that was introduced in Splatoon 3. It differs wildly from the other two brushes in its class. It is the strongest out of the bunch, but it suffers with poor ink efficiency and slower movement, which can be tricky to use if you're trying to use it like the other brushes. Number two, the pain brush has a unique swing that differs from the rest of the weapons in the brush class. The main difference is that it takes 23 frames to start swinging the brush when attacking, compared to the one frame it takes the ink brush and the octa brush. This is a substantial slowdown that might cause trouble if you try to play the pain brush the way you play the other brushes. In addition, your movement is heavily restricted when swinging the pain brush, so you can get caught off guard if you start swinging without clearing an area first. It does 150 damage per swing, with ink losing damage based on distance travelled, so its fall off damage can vary, with the minimum damage being about 75. When in rolling form, the pain brush does 50 damage to whatever it comes into contact with. Its ink efficiency is also poor in comparison to the other two brushes. It's so, so important with this weapon to constantly be refilling your ink tank whenever you can. You'll be punished for throwing bombs recklessly and might find yourself running out of ink frequently. After swinging, there is a 0.83 second cooldown period before it starts recovering ink. Again, this is slower than the other brushes. Number three, the pain brush is a solid boss slayer when compared to the other two brushes. Unlike the ink brush and octo brush, you shouldn't have much issue dealing with the majority of bosses due to the damage the pain brush does. The pain brush's range means you can attack several things at once, which makes it very useful against groups of lessers. It's also worth using height to your advantage, like you would do with the other brushes, but the pain brush does have decent range, which means it can reach a steelhead from the ground, for example. Given its rolling form, you shouldn't have much issue going out to reach far bosses like stingers and big shots. The only issue you will likely face is similar to other ink hungry weapons, and that flyfish and moors could be problematic if you're working without much ink. You'll likely want to prioritise your ink tank for the main weapon and its ability to roll instead of throwing bombs and eggs. However, like every other weapon, you'll need to work outside of your general role, so learning how to use your ink tank well and knowing when to back away from bosses is just as important. Number four. Regarding the weapon overall, I treat the pain brush as I treat heavyweight or backline weapons, which sounds surprising as it's a brush, but it's so different to the other brushes that it requires a different style of play. Think about comparing a carbon roller to a dynamo roller. It sounds silly to treat them the same way, doesn't it? When the pain brush was first released, I started using it like I used the dynamo roller. Thoughtful, targeted attacks with care not to miss my shots and care not to end up without ink. I've since adapted this to be a bit more aggressive, and I would say that whilst the dynamo comparison is still worthwhile, it doesn't cover the pain brush completely. But, generally speaking, learning to distinguish the pain brush from the other two brushes in its class has allowed me to play it differently, which has allowed me to have success with the weapon. Number 5. One of the biggest mistakes I see when watching newer players or less experienced players play Samurai is not understand pacing and knowing when to stand back or move forward. This also links into boss prioritization and knowing when to time your attacks to match boss cycles. The reason I bring this up is because the pain brush is very unforgiving if you flail recklessly and charge into situations without thinking about what your next moves should be. As good as the damage is, the startup is slow and you're often rendered immobile when attacking. These things leave you vulnerable and it's quite easy to die to various things here. It's also really tricky to reverse an overwhelming situation because the pain brush requires space and ink to work which might not be available if things are chaotic. The pain brush is very effective at dealing with lessers and lessers must absolutely be dealt with when you're using this weapon to create safety around you. 
Backing out from situations is also something worth doing at times because you're not much use when you're dead. If you're beginning to get overwhelmed, the general advice is to deploy specials, but also knowing when to back off to refill your ink tank is important with this weapon. On the flip side, knowing when to take out bosses early to prevent becoming overwhelmed is also important when playing a weapon like Painbrush, and you'll often need to try to mitigate pressure from certain bosses in different areas. The Painbrush will cause you pain if you recklessly empty your ink tank and try to charge into situations without a plan of what to attack, when to attack, and why you're attacking. I hope this helps you appreciate the pain brush a little bit more. Let me know what you think. I'll see you guys soon.